and welcome to the next episode of No Vallejo. Today we're doing uh, cinema or film history in Vallejo. And today with me I have uh, Jim Rykowski, who is the Solano County Film uh, Office Liaison. Uh, he is pretty much in charge of connecting the dots as far as anybody's needing to you know, do any kind of filmmaking out here in Solano County. Um, I do have the privilege of sharing uh, an office with him. I work right next to him, and luckily enough, I do get the opportunity to pick his brain uh, when it comes to film history here in Vallejo pretty much on the daily basis. And today, he's taken the time out of his busy schedule to uh, kind of educate all of us on the history of filmmaking here in Vallejo and you know, shed some light on some of the more uh, unique and interesting storylines that um, you know exist here in our wonderful city. So. And with that, Jim, if I may, have you give us the history of the film office, its role here in Solano County, and, um, you know, its place here in Vallejo. Thanks, Mandy. We've um, been the film office since August 1st, 1996. Uh, there was a gentleman in Solano County uh, that was doing, the, doing film work, and he retired. And we always didn't know really what he retired from, because I think he was just doing it by himself. Um, so we are now recognized by the state of California, the California Film Commission, as the official film office of Solano County. We represent the entire county, not just Vallejo. So August of 1996, we got started. It fell into my lap in April of 1998, and I've been doing it ever since. What's that, 21 years now? Um, we, we do what we can to attract filming uh, of all kinds to Solano County, be it feature films, television, commercials, still photography, industrial, whatever. Uh, we, we try to get them here, show them our locations, uh, show them how easy it is to film here, how affordable it is. And once they make the decision to come here, then we do everything we can to uh, act as a liaison between them and the community, helping them find what they want, what they need to get their productions done. Uh, luckily, we're close to San Francisco and Sacramento, where there's a big crew basis, so it's, it's not hard to get crew for these projects. And uh, we've been doing it a long time, so people know we're here, they call, and uh, we do what we can on a, on a limited budget. You guys have certainly um, provided a, a wide array of different projects that have uh, come through not only Vallejo, but the entire county. I mean, even just the uh, small amount of information that you've provided in the time that I've worked here um, has really kind of you know, introduced me to a whole different world of the filmmaking history of Vallejo and the Solano County. Uh, thankfully enough, now we do have more projects coming in because of uh, the new film studios that's been operating in the last couple of years, thanks to Mark Walters and their partnership with Cinelis, and that would be Filmmare Island. Uh, they obviously have brought in some of the bigger name projects like uh, the Transformers film that just premiered a few months ago, as well as the uh, various different seasons of 13 Reasons Why, which has been a huge staple show on Netflix. Um, if I may, Jim, if, can you give me a bit of a background onto some of the projects that you first got involved in? You know, some of the first projects that came your way when you were uh, when the film office fell into your lap in '98, and uh, maybe give us some stories that may not necessarily be so well known to the public. Sure. When filming really took off in this county, I, I believe it goes back near as I can tell back to 1914. Uh, but it really took off in Vallejo when the shipyard closed in 1996. That opened up um, a lot of buildings, a lot of great locations, which were not readily available uh, when the Navy was here. There was filming done on Mare Island while it was a Navy base, but that was fairly limited. So when the shipyard closed in 96, we were, we were lucky enough uh, very early to get some uh, Robin Williams work. Robin Williams was a huge star at the time, and, and he could... Uh, kind of decide, I'll make your movie, but I'm going to make it in the Bay Area because I want to go home at night. So he was able to do that. So really one of the first things we ever did was um, it was um, special effects for a Robin Williams movie called Flubber. Uh, they uh, rented a warehouse on Mare Island, did some green screen work, uh, flying cars and that sort, sort of thing. Uh, and that was kind of our, uh, you know, a brief introduction. That wasn't a big project. Uh, but after that, we got parts of uh, movies uh, like Jack, uh, the treehouse scene uh, was done on Mare Island in what is now the uh, Sports Center. Uh, they built the interior of the treehouse in there. Uh, we had um, What Dreams May Come in 1997. There was an old uh, World War II era aircraft carrier here, the Ariskany, 
And they use that as the hell ship in the movie. Uh, Robin Williams is dead for almost this entire movie. So uh, it was the hell ship. Uh, we got a tiny bit of Patch Adams. If you see Patch Adams pretty early in the movie, there's a exterior scene of the hospital. That's the uh, old naval hospital on Mare Island. And in the scene, you will, uh, you will actually see snow. Uh, they trucked in, I don't know how many truckloads of uh, snow and uh, tossed it on the ground there. It was, a, I believe it was a fairly cold winter day and uh, it lasted long enough for them to get what they wanted. Wow. Um, that was probably, I think that was our last Robin Williams movie. Uh, we had um, a big portion of an Eddie Murphy movie called Metro back in the 90s. Oh, I actually just had the privilege of watching that movie. And for those of you who are listening and haven't actually had the opportunity to watch it. Granted, the writing isn't necessarily top tier. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily uh, give them a, the Academy Award for, for their uh, screenwriting ability, but it's a lot of fun. It's very entertaining. Uh, that one scene um, with the Muni car in San Francisco just kind of tumbling down, I believe it was California Street. For anybody who either lived, worked, or is familiar with the San Francisco area, the sheer amount of visual effects that they were able to achieve in that film uh, puts a lot of the CG effects that you see in this current modern age of cinema uh, kind of to shame because it was just really just over the top and just a lot of visual uh, on-screen destruction, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah, they did that uh, cable car scene in the same um, same building. They did the treehouse scene for Jack. It was the old, it's what's now the Pacific Sports Center with the soccer fields uh, or Mare Island Sports Center. Uh, and they did the interior of that. And then about the last 20, 25 minutes of the movie uh, take place on Mare Island. Eddie Murphy is a San Francisco uh, police officer, police detective, and he has to go rescue the, um, the uh, officer that's been kidnapped and she's being held on Mare Island. They call it Mare Island, which was great. They drive over, you see him coming across the causeway. And then of course they corner the bad guy. Um, they spend a good 15, 20 minutes rescuing her out of uh, one of the Mare Island buildings, and then there's the you know the inevitable chase scene at the end of the movie, uh, where they actually uh, drive the bad guy off into uh, dry dock number two. Uh, interesting uh, little tidbit there. The first time they uh, did that, and I don't know how many of their trucks they had because they couldn't have done this too many times. They crashed it uh, onto the bottom of the dry dock, and it actually landed on the remote camera they had down there. Oh my so god! So they, they shot it again, and it's 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 good. It's uh, you know, and when you're when you're new at this film thing, like we were then, you know, we we were just amazed on what what went into making one of these movies, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, again, it was an Eddie Murphy movie, so it's not not going to win an Academy Award, but I, I think it's worth watching. Uh, and then the other big movie we had on Mare Island, which was really the big movie at the time, was the movie called Sphere with Sam Jackson, uh, Dustin Hoffman, Sharon Stone. Um, they came. It's an underwater uh, thriller uh, based on a Michael Crichton book. They were going to, they came in and they were going to lease one of the dry docks and film their underwater scenes in the dry dock. They got here, they painted the dry dock, and then they realized they weren't going to be able to light it like they wanted or filter the water like they wanted. Oh. So Warner Brothers uh, went away, and then they came back. They rented um, the building that Alstrom uh, is in now. Uh, I don't remember the building number, 599 maybe, and they... Uh, built two huge water tanks in there and did all their underwater filming in there. The Rodman Center, which is nearby, had an indoor pool, which they uh, got operating and did their diver training in there for the movie stars so they could, uh, so they could safely do their scenes underwater. And uh, Warner Brothers is one of, the, one of the studios that will give you good solid numbers when they film, and they, they spent over $20 million in Vallejo. They, they did everything. They bought two automobiles in Vallejo. So that was a real eye opener when you see what kind of money these uh, these productions could spend. Wow, twenty million dollars! I mean, and that's in nineteen. Uh, that's in the nineteen nineties. Yeah, that was so like what ninety seven or ninety eight. Uh, Sphere was ninety seven, ninety eight. I think yeah. it was released in ninety eight. Unfortunately enough, though, that film kind of flopped, right? I mean, it didn't. Really, oh yeah, <laughs> it didn't get a lot of <laughs> no, rave reviews, but and they spent twenty million dollars. And uh, you know, just don't want to put you on blast here, but you actually do still own some of the original film. Uh, canisters that contain the actual I film print don't itself. tell Warner Brothers, but I still have a 35 millimeter <laughs> copy of uh, the movie, and the reason I have it is I could never get them to take it back. So, so if they want it, if they're listening and they want it, it's in my office and they can have it back. There you have it, 1525 Sonoma Boulevard, Vallejo, <laughs> California. Jim Rykowski. Uh, so, man, well, so those were some of the productions in the 90s, and um, didn't really get a chance to uh, touch too much on them, but you said that there were other projects that happened uh, to take place here in Vallejo prior to 
um, the film office uh, falling in your lap in 98. Um, I see here on your sheet you have some films that date back all the way to the 1900s, um, even all the way spanning through to the 1980s. Uh, maybe quickly go through some of these projects sure. and, and give us some uh, a little bit of a backstory into sure. some of these productions. Um, you know, I've done a little research on trying to find films that were shot in Solano County. The first one that I could find, which is probably the first one ever done here, was a movie called Cameo Kirby, which uh, filmed out in Rio Vista. It was kind of set on the Mississippi River, so you can see why they would go out there. And it starred the great Dustin Farnham. And a little bit of backstory, uh, it's my understanding that Dustin Hoffman's parents liked Dust, uh, Dustin Farnham, and they named Dustin Hoffman after Dustin Farnham. Oh, it all comes around yeah. full circle. <laughs> <laughs> and another movie out there in 1917 called Jim Bledsoe. Um, the first Vallejo movie that I know of is a 1924 film uh, starring Wallace Beery called The Devil's Cargo. The Devil's Cargo. Uh, yeah. I was told it was a sequel. No. Oh. And I don't know what the first movie was, but it was a sequel even back in 1924. Uh, Mare Island got a, a big a part of a film in 1943, right during the middle of World War II, a, a submarine movie called Destination Tokyo, uh, which was um, so good, I guess the Navy was actually able to use it for a training film for, for these submariners. I think we actually uh, got a chance to look at one of those clips. We did. Um, 1949, Big Picture came to Fairfield Sassoon called... All the King's Men, uh, Broderick Crawford and Mercedes McCambridge won several Academy Awards, including Best Picture. I remember if that. If you film. watch that movie, you will see downtown Sassoon, and what you will also really see is the old courthouse on uh, Texas Street in downtown Fairfield. Interesting. Uh, so that was a big picture. Um, I just realized uh, uh, Clint Eastwood has been in the county twice, and both times he filmed in Little Bird's Landing, California. Hmm. And if you don't know where Bird's Landing is, um, you go south out of Sassoon City toward uh, Sassoon Bay, and there's a little town there with a few houses and a bar. He did uh, two movies there, A Honky Tonk Man. A lot of it takes place in that little bar there. The bar is still there. There's still pictures of the production in the, oh, in the wow. bar. So I had no idea. If you find yourself thirsty in Bird's Landing, California, pop in. There you have it. And they did another um, a movie out there called Bird, about uh, Charlie Bird Parker, the uh, jazz musician. Oh, interesting. And they filmed in Bird's Landing. Oh, wow. So, um... Just before we became the film office out in uh, the Mothball Fleet, there was a, a fun movie called Down Periscope with Kelsey Grammer. Oh, wow. Down Periscope. <laughs> that was a comedy, right? Yeah, where he, he got the old beat-up submarine and yeah. uh, you know, a long story. They, they win the war games against the nuclear sub, and, uh, and I, it, it's fun. And then you see all those old ships that were out in the Mothball Fleet. I have to check time. my uh, sources, but if I'm not mistaken, I think Rob Schneider has a pretty he does. funny scene in that <laughs> yeah. film. Yes, Rob Schneider is in that movie. <laughs> Um, a fun, fun little uh, uh, interesting phone call I got one day was a, a movie called The General's Daughter starring um, John Travolta. And I get a call from this location manager. He says, look, we've been down in Louisiana for months. We just wrapped this movie. We've, we've done all our filming, except we realize we don't have a scene to roll the credits over. And again, this movie takes place in Louisiana. So we set them up with Grizzly Island Road, which runs it south out of Sassoon. Uh, and if you watch that movie, the credits roll over the John Travolta character driving down this road with the helicopter. I guess this is pre-drone, so helicopter shot from above. And it looks like it's in Louisiana. And that's all we got on that movie, but I'm counting it as a Solano County movie. There you have it. Uh, fun one uh, that I worked on uh, was the low-budget Zodiac movie, um, In Control of All Things, in uh, 2003. A $1 million picture, they just did everything on a shoestring, and it was so much fun because... And this is not to be confused with the No, not film. the David Fincher film. Yeah, with Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, which yeah. shot none in Vallejo. Shot zero. Zero but shot we still in have But we still have a credit. We still, the film office still got a credit for some, some work we did for them. Uh, fun movie, Six Flags has been in, in, been in the movies a few times. 50 First Dates with Drew Barrymore and... Um, Adam Sandler. And Adam Sandler. That's uh, a classic. The film takes place in Hawaii, but the uh, animal park that they work at, the walrus, the dolphin, uh, not the dolphin, the uh, penguin, those are all uh, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom animals, so they were there quite a while. The late, great Jocko, if I'm yes. not mistaken, was yes. the walrus in that scene. Um, and his apartment, so to speak, where he had that aquarium in the background... Um, that was inside the shark experience, if I'm not mistaken. I uh, was at the shark experience or outside the dolphin tanks. Okay, one, one of the two. Close but it was right there. Right yeah, there. They turned that into his uh, apartment. Uh, another fun movie we worked on was The Master, a uh, Paul Thomas Anderson film starring uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman and uh, Joaquin Phoenix. 
and they were in uh, they were in town quite a while. Um, discovered Mare Island, loved Mare Island. It's a uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a film that takes place right after World War II, so they were able to find the period period looks on Mare Island that they were after. They brought um, they brought the uh, presidential yacht, the Potomac, from Alameda to film. Uh, there was an old um, it was actually one of the old. Uh, Maritime Academy ships, one of the first Golden Bears, mm -hmm. was at uh, Mare Island, and they used that in the filming. And they, uh, gosh, they were here probably principal filming for a month, and they did a lot of night stuff. And, uh, and that was fun. You had some uh, Amy Adams and uh, some other big stars in town. They used one of the mansions. If you, if you drive down in front of the mansions on Mare Island, you'll see the one, there's one with awnings, and that was uh, awnings that the master put up. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah that was... Uh... I remember there was a bunch of nice like waterfront shots of the Mare Island waterfront where you can actually see uh, some really nice uh, nighttime shots of mm -hmm. Vallejo in the distance. Yeah, and, they did um, a lot of night filming. A very underrated film, that movie. Yeah, uh, based on uh, L. Ron Hubbard, loosely based on L. Ron Hubbard and, and the founding of Scientology. So, very interesting film. Rest in peace, Seymour. Yes. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, not his last film, but, uh, but pretty one, close. One, one, one of his, his last, last films. Yeah. And then uh, the life kind of changed uh, for me in the film office in Vallejo uh, in, um, oh gosh, 2016, um, when a company called Cinelease from Los Angeles came to town saying that they, uh, they had built uh, film studios all over the United States, some uh, international, and they had nothing in the Bay Area. There's no, there's no st studio space in the Bay Area, and they thought this would be a perfect place for it. They came to me, said they were going to look at Mare Island, they were going to look at Treasure Island, they were going to look at the old Alameda Naval Air Station, and they were going to look at Hunter's Point. And uh, luckily enough, they uh, ended up choosing Vallejo. And um, they are leasing buildings, renting buildings on Mare Island for, for film production. They're not ideal, but they're, they're working. And then they have plans to build, um, I believe, six stages to start with. And... Uh, on Mare Island and uh, and turn it into a, a you know a working a working stages uh, that can be used permanent sound stages yeah, and, and the first to be built in California uh, since the 1940s down in Hollywood if I'm not mistaken no there I think there's been there been some I think Sinalese themselves have built, built some studios out in Manhattan Beach oh. and things down there oh, okay but there hasn't there's not any in the Bay Area there's very little stage space in the Bay Area a little bit in Marin. Uh, so it's hard to find, and um, with the good crews that we have up here, it's you know it's, they should be making making more movies up there. And there's a huge benefit too for them, uh, or an incentive really, because of yes. the, uh, the the new California tax program that was introduced a couple of years ago. Yeah, what what was happening is California was losing a ton of production to Canada. It was kind of where it started. They would get tax credits to go to Canada, and you know no matter how big a budget these films have, bottom line is they're trying to save money. I don't care if it's a two hundred million dollar movie. Or a fifty million dollar movie, they're trying to save money. They, they cut. You'd be surprised, you know, how cheap they seem on these big budget movies. So we were losing films to Canada, uh, and then Georgia and Florida and Louisiana all started these tax credits. So if Canada wasn't getting them, they were leaving the state. And what that meant is that people who had worked in film production in California their whole lives were having to leave the state to find work, and they they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to have to even temporarily relocate to to make a living. So finally, the state of California, the California Film Office, uh, were able to get some tax incentives done, uh, which is keeping production here. And uh, the benefit for Solano County and Vallejo is that they get another 10% on these tax credits if they film outside of Los Angeles. So that's bringing films out of Los Angeles because, again, it's worth it. They can come up here, uh, bring crew from L.A. And, and use the San Francisco-based crew, and even with hotels and all that they can still save money. And so um, between Film Mare Island showing up and these tax credits, I mean, and all of a sudden shows like uh, the Netflix uh, Paramount TV show 13 Reasons Why it showed up. They've wrapped season three of, a couple of months ago. It's my understanding they'll be back soon for season four. If it'll go past season four, I have no idea, but they're, uh, they keep writing scripts and uh, they keep uh, making it, and uh, they're using uh, several buildings on Mare Island, including the old Rodman Center, and uh, also you, some locations here in downtown Belize. Oh yeah, as well. a lot of yeah. The old City Lights building is their cafe. They had a temporary um, movie theater facade on Georgia Street. The Baker's Drug Store was uh, on Georgia Street. So they've been all over town. They've used some houses. They've used um, the old Ford dealership on Solano. 
and uh, they've been out at Dan Foley Park. And last season, if you saw the episode where Clay goes and meets his girlfriend who's in a mental facility, that's Dan Foley uh, Cultural Center. And you'll see Dan Foley Park out there. They take a walk outside. So they've been all over town. Of course, they don't identify it as Vallejo or Solano County or anything. It's, you know, fictional USA, but Mm -hmm. uh, they're spending a lot of money here. And then um, we had the movie, the, the, uh, another Paramount film, uh, Bumblebee, uh, the latest Transformers movie come. And they scouted Mare Island. And uh, it's my understanding that they were so impressed with what they could find on Mare Island that Travis Knight, the director, had the script rewritten to include more of Mare Island. So if you've seen the film, uh, there's a little bit of downtown Vallejo and a whole lot of Mare Island. They, uh, you know, they end up in the dry dock, of course, and mm-hmm. filling it with water and cranes and helicopters. And, and anybody who lives over that way when they were filming, I, I know they heard all that. <laughs> Some of them weren't terribly happy, but, uh, but it got done. It, it looks good. And the one thing about this industry is if they have a good um, experience in your county, in your location, they, everybody talks to everybody. And if they have a bad experience, they, everybody talks to everybody. So I know that, um, you know, in this industry, it's very difficult, um, you know, to get over some hurdles when it comes to permitting. And if, um, if you could maybe kind of give me some insight as to what are some of the hurdles that filmmakers face when they come to shoot on here. And then maybe some of the things that we do um, as far as a county uh, to make it easier um, on productions to come and, and film up here as well. Well, certainly Vallejo and, and all the cities in the uh, county and, and, and Vallejo by far gets the bulk of the, of the filming in the county because of Mare Island. Uh, the city of Vallejo has been great um, and Lennar, uh, Mare Island has been great. Uh, you know, they have to they have to make sure all the uh, I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and that all these all the insurance is taken care of in case, you know, God forbid anything happens on a movie set. Um, they they need to make sure whatever you're going to do is you're not doing something too stupid that's going to put, you know, property or people at risk. Um, I, I attended a film uh, fire safety seminar years ago and one thing they were told me, they said if a film company tells you it's going to be a little explosion, it's going to be a big explosion. And if they tell you it's going to be a big explosion, it's best to say no. <laughs> this, stuff, this stuff can be done, can be done safely. And it, as long as people do what they're supposed to do and do what they say they're going to do, the city of Vallejo and all the, the you know, they welcome filming because it's, they spend a lot of money. Uh, they spend money all over town, you know, the, the dry cleaners, the restaurants, certainly the hotels. The lumber. The, oh, the lumber is, is a huge expense. Um, yeah, so it's it's a it's a pain, you know, if they're in your neighborhood or they're flying helicopters at midnight um, or ten o'clock at night. It's it, I I sympathize with you, and you know, because I get those phone calls too when that happens. Uh, but it's temporary, um, you know. I've always said I hope we get to the point where we have so much filming that that people really start to complain. But uh, you know, it's still it's still exciting for Vallejo. Uh, you know, it's people people think it's neat to see see their town, their county on the on the uh, screen, uh, you know, challenges, it's, it's, you know, we wish we had more hotel rooms, you know, we have to, you know, sometimes they have to go up to Napa. But one thing I was told very early in this career of mine is don't sell your proximity to San Francisco, send, sell it to Napa. Because if, uh, you know, you bring in an Adam Sandler and a Drew Barrymore, there's plenty of places you can put those people in Napa that they, that they can stay and get some privacy while you still put the crew in Vallejo. Uh, Vallejo's not expensive as far as hotels, um, and and they like that. There is a, a San Francisco production zone, which is basically a 30-mile radius from Market and Van Ness Street. And if you do filming in that production zone, a film company does not have to pay per diem for the crew. Vallejo, Venetia... The line goes all up into Green Valley somewhere, not quite Fairfield. So production companies, uh, they can bring crew in from San Francisco. They don't have to pay them extra. They don't have to pay them per diem. They don't have to put them in a hotel. Uh, if they were filming in Fairfield, they might have to do that. Uh, but in Vallejo, Benicia, they don't. That's a good thing for us. Um, you know, having a, an airport in Napa is a good thing if you're, you know, producers, directors, movie stars are coming up you know they can fly right into napa and it and it works it works very well but you now they're not they're not 
too many challenges other than, you know, it, and especially the challenges will be less when, when Film Mare Island gets their um, studios built uh, because I, you know, it's no reason to think they won't keep those studios really, really busy. One thing I should mention, the Sinhalese company, which is kind of the parent company to Film Mare Island, they're a grip and lighting company. So they provide all the lighting and electrical for productions. And they have space on Mare Island. So even if a production is not filming in Solano County, San Francisco Productions, Sacramento, Napa, anything, they're getting their grip and lighting stuff from Sinhalese. So here's another Vallejo company making money on the film industry, even if they're not filming here. This is such an exciting time for Vallejo, for the Solano County, uh, because of what Filmer Island and Sinhalese are doing. And, you know, there's definitely a, a brighter road ahead for, um, you know, productions to be working out here uh, in our little pocket of California and you know frankly you know somebody who thrives in working in uh, this travel industry I'm really you know hopeful that things will continue to um, grow and you know we'll see a lot more productions bigger names and and ultimately end up resulting in what 13 reasons why has given us and that's hot points or or, or, or talking points that you can um, market to people who want to come and see these filming locations um, in your city so uh, for example, 13 Reasons Why, uh, one of their trademark shooting locations in the first season uh, was that painting of Monet, uh, Claude Monet inspired painting in the back of Indian Alley over mm -hmm. there by Monet's or, uh, you know, as we know, right. at the, city, the old City Lights building. I mean, I can't tell you enough how many times I've seen people um, either, you know, just on Instagram, social media, whatever, uh, come and, you know, shoot a selfie in front of that location. Um, I actually did a, a brief YouTube search not too long ago where... I typed in 13 reasons why locations and I so many different videos of all these influencers who came to Vallejo or or are you know talking about Vallejo and saying like these are all the different locations that you can visit to actually see um, where they actually filmed some of these some of these scenes from 13 reasons why because there's a huge fan base for that and I just I find that really fascinating and something that we could definitely tap into more to you know showcase some of these um, you know iconic locations that have been used for for these productions and for those of you who are uh, Robin Williams fans, I'm sure you didn't know that the Sports Center happens to be uh, one of those spots where they, they filmed that iconic scene in, in Jack. So I didn't know that before I worked here. I know that now. I absolutely love that. Um, one other project that I'm a huge fan of, unfortunately, that you know they, they don't no longer air, uh, but they do have kind of like a spinoff series that they've been uh, working on as of late, and that's uh, with the great mind of Adam Savage. Uh, and, and Mythbusters, uh, they've used Mythbusters, Mythbusters has used uh, Mare Island uh, on several occasions, if I'm not mistaken, they did a, a Star Wars special, they also did a zombie apocalypse special, um, and then just recently they did the uh, Mythbusters Junior show, and I think their first episode they did the duct tape parachute episode, where I, I believe they were just testing all these different duct tape um, experiments, which, you know, if you're a fan of Mythbusters, you know that that's a, a, a common... Uh, base for their experiments that they use and you know I remember you told me like hey I'm gonna go to Mare Island I'm gonna go see some people drop uh, you know Buster uh, which is their their dummy uh, crash test dummy so to speak uh, from a, <laughs> a high altitude from a helicopter with this duct tape parachute and uh, maybe you know talk to me about uh, what it's been like working with uh, you know the Mythbusters team and you know I know they're based out of Alameda um, but you know maybe talk about some of the other projects that they've, they've, they've worked on out here. Yeah Mythbusters is very very good to us. They seem like they were always here. They, they uh, built a duct tape bridge across Dry Dock 4 oh, I remember which that. is a great episode because it's a little scary but it worked. They were able to do that. Uh, there was another episode and the myth was somebody jumped out of an airplane, the parachute didn't open, it hit a teeter-totter where and there was a little kid on it mm -hmm. just on one end so it flung this young little girl up in the air and she survived so the myth was they went out to Mare Island they built this teeter-totter they started dropping things and of course testing g-forces and stuff um, it, they busted that myth because <laughs> she would not have survived. Yeah, no. They did that. Um, as you said, um, Miss Busters Jr. came out and they uh, flew a helicopter and, and threw out a, a, a duct tape parachute, which almost worked. <laughs> it didn't quite. Uh, uh, there was a, another show. It hasn't been released yet, but it's called another Adam Sa uh, Savage show called Being Savage. 
And they were at Mare Island this year uh, with the gentleman who has invented a better, new and better um, jet pack so you can fly around. And uh, the man flew it, and then I, it's my understanding that Adam Sav- Savage flew it too. So, And that um, show hasn't aired yet, if I'm not mistaken. It has not, okay. no. Um, and, I'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, but it's you know one of those shows, they love Mare Island. They could come out, they could get big spaces. Uh, you know, where else... There, you know, there's only one other dry dock in the big dry dock in the Bay Area, and that's at Hunter's Point. So we have four here, and they were able to to do what you know they wanted to do. And uh, I don't know if they ever blew anything up out here, but they they used the Vallejo Marina one time. It had something to do with raising a sunken boat. I don't remember. That oh, I think I remember boat. that one. Yeah, no, I believe it was like trying to use. A, I don't know if it was uh, some sort of air tanks or something, but you would try to raise out a, a sunken ship yeah. or something like and that. and conveniently, I think we had a sunken boat in the marina at the time. <laughs> they didn't even have to sink it, so they uh, they were able to do that. But, you know, before these film tax credits got going, our bread and butter was commercials, uh, still photography, not real money-making things because people didn't come in and, you know, spend, you know, you know not, unlike a, a film or a television production, they don't come here and stay. They come in one day, they use their location, and they uh, and they leave. So these, uh, you know, we'd get a feature, you know, every three five years, and you know, it wasn't it wasn't a big part of what we did. And now you're talking, you know, three seasons of of television, um, talking, you know, another feature film, and no reason to believe that once these studios get get up and running, that that we won't have a lot more of these. Uh, these are going to be state of the art studios. Um, Super soundproof. Um, it's my understanding that all the, the dressing rooms and makeup and all that will be in the building. Nobody will have to go outside, and it's you know it's supposed to be wonderful. So very excited about that. I you know I hope it hope it gets built sooner than later. It's not easy and it's not cheap, but hopefully it'll get done soon. Just kind of touching on a couple of other. I, I know you were talking about some of the other uh, bread and butter make, uh, money making uh, projects that would come through here before the tax credits. Um, I know that there was this one, uh, was it an Audi commercial, the Volkswagen commercial? There was a Volkswagen commercial we did downtown where we uh, doubled for um, Fairbanks, or Fairbanks, Alaska. Mm. They put a caribou in the middle of Sonoma Boulevard. Oh, wow. And uh, they drove by it because this was the Volkswagen and, you know, and you were in Alaska. And then, of course, they cut to an actual scene of, of Alaska. Uh, but downtown Vallejo, we... Uh, they put a caribou in the middle of the street. And then uh, another one you can find on YouTube is a Fiat commercial. That's the one I'm talking about. That shot, Fiat 500, I think, shot in downtown Vallejo, racing down the alleys. You'll see a, a Vallejo recology truck. Uh, they swerve around. Then they end up at Mare Island driving through buildings. and um, Very intense. And they end up on the waterfront. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, it's not hard to find on It's on pretty YouTube. comedic. Highly suggest <clears throat> watching that ad. Uh, I'll be sure to include a link to it uh, in the description below. Um, one of the other, uh, and, and this is something that only um, maybe the younger crowd would be really interested in knowing, but, um, and for those parents who are listening, there's a show, um, I believe it still airs on Cartoon Network, <laughs> called Amazing World of Gumball. Um, it's an and it's kind of like a hybrid mix show, a mixed media where you have uh, live action sets with animated characters in there. and. Um, I believe the production company is based out of the UK. Uh, we actually follow the creator on, on Twitter, and uh, they came out a couple years ago. And you know, it's been more than that, but that was an interesting phone call when you get a call from the Cartoon Network and saying we're interested in Vallejo. And I'm, of course, you know, not not being a young person, I said, well, it's a cartoon. But uh, having seen the show now, where they put the animation in the, the live uh, backgrounds. Uh, it was very interesting. They they picked some houses in the older part of town. I mean, it wasn't it, again. It wasn't a huge production, but you know, it's it's all kinds of phone calls I get about all kinds of productions. So uh, that was one of the more interesting ones. If I'm not mistaken, there was a few uh, locations in that uh, project that was uh, what was it? So you said in um, some of the older houses in the downtown area. I believe they used Corbus Field. Oh, you're right. Um, they used Corbus they Field. Use Corbus and Field. then um, I believe the shopping center. <clears throat> Redwood and Sonoma. It was like, yeah, Redwood and Sonoma, that shopping center, if I'm not mistaken, they, they used that area as well. So there's, there's been a, a decent amount of shots that they've utilized. But again, these are just pretty much static shots. They're not really moving shots or anything like that. But I, I just thought that was really interesting. I mean, I'm not particularly the biggest fan of this show, but there's a huge following. 
um, online and as well as with the younger crowd. So I just, you know, for those of you who have kids in Vallejo and um, or, you know, visiting Vallejo and, and want to kind of showcase some of these locations of their favorite TV show, just let them know that Amazing World of Gumball did, in fact, film That's out right. here. So, um, And I don't know if you can maybe share with us some of the upcoming projects or projects that are kind of in the pipeline right now. I know sometimes you get wind that, you know, there's a, a, a project that might be coming to town here shortly. Um, I don't know if you have any insight on that that you, that you can share. I know. Well, actually, right now it's it's been it's been pretty quiet. Um, and and as you know, if if you know Steven Spielberg was coming next week, I wouldn't tell you about it <laughs> <laughs> because they don't. You know, these crews, these productions don't want the publicity. They want to get in, get out. Uh, I mean, you can't keep you know big productions like Bumblebee and, and you know Thirteen Reasons Why hidden when they're when they're turning downtown Vallejo into the 1970s for uh, for Bumblebee, and there's a, you know somebody even asked me if they thought we were getting a Montgomery Wards because oh, they built one on, that, in Georgia that, on, on the in downtown Vallejo. That, that was amazing. I really enjoyed yeah. walking downtown yeah. downtown Georgia. Montgomery Street. Wards has been out of business a long time. I used to shop there. I, I, yeah. For those of you who don't know, Google Montgomery Ward. It was basically <laughs> like a little micro J.C. Penney's slash Sears. Uh, there, there was one in Napa. So you I'm can't you can't keep those productions hidden, but they don't. They just don't want thousands of people showing up the first day trying to get a job. And uh, you know, there's ways to go about it. For uh, 13 Reasons Why, I used a ton of of extras, as you know, high school kids and other extras, and they they did very open casting calls in Vallejo and also I think in Marin. And uh, you know, that's that's how you go about it. That's how you you know. I don't know, break into show business, if you will. But uh, if you're willing to stand around a lot, you know, hurry up and wait. You can, uh, you can be an extra in these in these shows. Uh, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> they actually had the auditions for 13 Reasons Why uh, in this, in this very building that yes. we're in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of rap parties too, if I'm not mistaken, for 13 Reasons Why I held in this building. Uh, and, and one actual, uh, before we, we go here, um, and I, I forgot that we totally glanced over this, but a few years ago, uh, I had the privilege of going to the sports center when it was converted to the arena for the relaunch of BattleBots. That's right. Two seasons of BattleBots. Two seasons of BattleBots. <laughs> Two seasons. And uh, yeah, they. Uh... They spent a lot of money in that building. They, of course, built their arena, but when they were done, I believe they put in some new artificial turf for those soccer fields because they ripped out the old stuff to get what they wanted to do. And it, you know, interrupted the sports center for a couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, if, I think if you get a couple of new uh, soccer fields out of it, you're probably pretty happy. You know, Gra- uh, Greater Vallejo Recreation District was, was very happy to make that trade. Uh, I believe that show's now gone down to Los Angeles for whatever reason. I think they just have a little more room for what they want to do down there. But yeah, you get uh, all sorts of you know you get all sorts of inquiries and and some obviously don't pan out. I m- I remember a, a film that didn't shoot here that was going to uh, ended up shooting I I think more down in Alameda. But they were looking at downtown Vallejo for the longest longest time, and the the di- location manager found the location and the director liked it and. And then he came back the next time, and uh, you know it's kind of an overcast, cloudy day. Got out of the car on Georgia Street, and went nope. <laughs> got back in the car and left. Wow. The the property owner, the location scout, because they'd worked so hard to, to get this going, and that was it. That was it. It was it. They were a, it was a, a bank robbery movie. They were looking for banks to rob, and this old bank uh, we thought was we thought was in the bag, and. Uh, it just never happened. So I've I've always said until you see lights and cameras and actors, it, it's never a done deal. They they can leave at the you know a fraction you know for whatever reason they just didn't like something that they loved a week ago and that's the director's call. That director was that Jim Jarmusch? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, that was Barry Levinson. Barry Levinson. Okay. I hope he's not listening. But. <laughs> But Barry Levinson was the director on Sphere, and uh, so he, he spent some time there. I think it finally got painted over, but on the, for the years on the back of the Rodman Center, there was a it had Barry Levinson's name on one of the parking places. Oh, I don't think it's there anymore. No. But, uh, I'll have to go check it out. Exactly. But speaking of you know projects going away, I, not so much feature films or television, but I've got numerous calls over the years for commercials that were going to film somewhere else, and for whatever reason, it didn't happen. Uh, they lost a location in somewhere else in the Bay Area, so they're you know scrambling. And you know they're usually calling on a Friday, and they want to film on Monday, and that's that's pretty difficult mm-hmm. uh, when you're trying to think about getting a film permit and all the people that have to approve it, uh, and the police and the fire and you know 
risk management and everybody, you know, city hall. Um, and, you know, you try, and if it gets done, it gets done. But, um, you know, that things happen, and, and projects, you know, they go away. For those of you who are filmmakers or are thinking about doing a project here in the county, um, let's, you know, using our host city as an example, um, if somebody, let's say a filmmaker who wants to do like a music video or a car commercial or anything like that, um, maybe just touch on some, some quick bullet points, uh, resources, and kind of like an overall workflow of what they would have to go through in order to, uh, to secure a permit and, you know, to get a production going. I know um, I've had the privilege of, you know, seeing you interact with other filmmakers and people who are, want to, you know, get a project off of the ground. They come in and they interview with you and they, you know, get some insight. Uh, you being the liaison, you're able to point everybody in the right direction. Um, for those of you who are listening and are interested, what would um, what would they have to do to, let's say, film something like that out here in Vallejo? Well, it, it certainly depends what you're doing and, and who's doing it. I mean, are you are you Paramount Pictures or are you a, you know a couple of high school students with a with a camera? And and first of all, if you film on private property in Vallejo uh, and really throughout the county, you do not need a permit from anybody. Now, if you're in somebody's front yard, you know, pretending to shoot guns. Uh, Someone's probably going to call the police, so I would I would let the police department know, um, and you know have them maybe come by. <laughs> um, so I mean you got to be smart. You can't can't be running around even in your front yard with a, with a gun unless you expect the police to be called. Uh, but you know a lot of especially young filmmakers don't understand that they need liability insurance. Um, you, you've just got to have that. The city's not going to let you film in public property unless you can prove that if someone gets hurt, trips over a curb, and you know. You'll be able you've to got insurance them, yeah. because you know they cities just covering themselves making sure uh, and you lead time I mean if you're doing a simple you know walking scene that's one thing with you know with two actors and a crew of four um, but if you're talking about something big you've got to give everybody lead time because when you start talking about getting you know the city hall involved and police and fire and and everything it's it you know it doesn't happen as fast as people think it should uh, I don't issue permits. All permits come from the city, um, and, and Benicia has a city permit. Those are uh, the only two cities that have actual film permits. Oh, that's uh, uh, and Dixon has one, uh, but Fairfield, Vacaville, you know, it's it's a little different process up there. Uh, it's more you know getting in touch with the the right people and them getting you in touch with the police department. Uh, but they don't have a film ordinance. But as much lead time as you can, um, you know, I've always joked that the two things I don't want to hear when the phone rings is music video or, or reality show. Because reality show just wants a permit to go anywhere, which is not really what the city wants to do. They want to know where you're going to be and when you're going to be there and, you know, what you're doing. And then, uh, you know, we had, a, I had an example of a music video one time, and, and the young man said, um, I'm going to have 50 extras. And I said, okay, where are you getting those extras? He said, we're, we're going to put a flyer up at all the high schools. I said, so what happens if 500 show up? And, you know, he looked at me like, oh. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, you know. And, and I've, I've made a deal with the police department years ago. If I know of any, any kind of production, you know, certainly a music video or just anything, I won't, I don't, they don't want to come around the corner and see something like this they didn't know about. So you let them know. And they're happy to drive by at no charge and keep, you know, keep an eye on things. And, and you know, if you want them, somebody, uh, police officers to close streets for 13 reasons why, then yes, that's going to cost you money. You got to pay those officers, and you got to, you know, you got to pay those fees. Uh, but the police department's great. Uh, you know, they they're very helpful. Uh, you know, they want to see things get done. Uh, but again, it just has to be done safely. So. Um, you know, get your get your script in front of the city and let them know what you're doing. And and you know, if you're not doing special effects, you're not blowing anything up or or playing with guns, then it's it's you know, it's really not that difficult. For all you aspiring filmmakers, those of you who are interested in doing any kind of productions or anything like that, uh, just be sure to you know uh, dot all your I's and cross all your T's exactly uh, when you're doing that. Um, but you know, as, as far as filmmaking, I'm, I'm in Vallejo and Solano County. I'm just really happy that we have you know these resources available for those who are interested in, in filming out here, and, and the constant growth that I've seen um, taking place out here in the county uh, since I've come on board. 
um, has I feel like has been growing at an exponential rate, and I just hope that we can we can continue to ride this high, and you know, hopefully in a few years down the line, we'll be able to look back and say, oh man, do you remember when we didn't even have those film studios? Do you remember when we were only doing X and X productions a year? But now, we're like we're churning out two features, a couple of short films, and whatever um, we'll be churning out once those film studios are built. But um, for that, Jim, um, I want to thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to. Uh, speak a little bit about the history of the film office and um, for those of you who are interested in uh, getting some more information about filming in Solano County or Vallejo please uh, shoot an email over to Jim that's Jim at visitvallejo.com and I'm sure he'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have and that about wraps it up for us today for the uh, second edition of the No Vallejo podcast uh, this is the uh, cinema or film history edition um, coming up within the next couple of weeks, we do have a few really uh, landmark events that um, take place every year in Vallejo. Uh, that would be the Vallejo Garden Tour, which is an annual fundraiser for the Vallejo Naval and Historical Museum. That's going to be taking place on May 19th. You can get those tickets uh, through the museum uh, or at Zoe June Gifton Garden. Of course, you can also get them at the Vallejo Ferry Terminal at the visitor information window, which is also part of Visit Vallejo. Uh, next month, we will be um, seeing a slew of different events that take place every year at the Vallejo Waterfront. Uh, June 1st will be the annual Filipino Community Cultural Celebration, which is the uh, Pista San Nayong. Festival. Um, headlining that event will be uh, CRSB, which is a homegrown uh, group that is from Vallejo. Um, they do great music and they'll be uh, performing at that event. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, uh, we'll be hosting the Northern California Pirate Festival, um, which is a two day event during Father's Day weekend at the Vallejo Waterfront. And those tickets are currently available and they are online. Uh, the Peace of San Ayon uh, Festival is a free event. That about wraps it up for us here today. Uh, if you have an interest in getting some more information on upcoming events for Visit Vallejo, uh, head to our website at visitvallejo.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Visit Vallejo uh, California. Thank you so much and uh, have a great day.